recently received an email and home video here at News 3. Jessica from Janesville writes, My husband caught this giant wasp in our yard today, and I was wondering if anyone knows anything about these wasps, where they come from, and if anyone else has seen them in our area. Does anyone know what it is? Jessica, of course we know someone. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> UW entomologist Phil Pelletieri is that someone, and he's back with us tonight. Welcome back. Nice to be here. Okay, so what was it? What is it? They call it a cicada killer, and that's what it does, is it stings cicadas, it buries them in the ground, um, and it's the biggest wasp you can find here, and it looks like a giant yellow jacket. I think that's what gets people You got attention. some here, and it, yeah. maybe we should put our finger near it so you get an idea of the so size of The two here are males, the larger one's a female, and they'll get somewhat larger than that depending on what their diet has been. And so, I mean, I, I like to tell the story, the governor moved us to Missouri and didn't tell us, but I grew <laughs> up in Madison. You never see, saw these till about seven, eight years ago. It was normally more of an Illinois, Indiana type insect, but with the lack of, of cold winter, we're seeing all kinds of things moving this way, much like my colleague had talked about the, the uh, Lone Star tick moving yeah. into the mm -hmm. state. So, Are they beneficial if they kill cicadas? Or? Well, cicadas are kind of harmless. I mean, in fact, I think of them, that's what late summer is about, is hearing them sure. buzzing in the trees, exactly. and that's all they attack. Now, the males do not sting, but they're very territorial, so people see them flying at them, and they, they misread it as aggression. The females, if you were to capture one and try to make it sting, maybe. I've never talked to anybody who has. They, they have no interest in stinging. Um, but they're big, scary looking. You can hear them flying. And so, as I said, most people get quite concerned. So you sort of leave it alone? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, one thing, if, if they're in your flower beds, if you mulch them, they're looking for bare soil to dig their burrows. So if you've got mulch, they won't bother it. What has the summer been like, bug-wise? <laughs> I know that kind of this normal. is a busy well, time you. know, you. last year was so bizarre because it was a lot of southern things got blown up here. Insects went through extra generations because it was so much heat and right. extended growing season. So in some sense, it's quite normal. And then the difference between the moisture versus the dry. So last year, I had a bunch of things that liked dry weather. This year, a bunch of things that, that like wet weather. Um, but we're seeing some spillovers, like butterflies. There were no butterflies last year. There's no butterflies this year. And, and I think it's a result because they started the, the spring with such low populations. But there's mosquitoes, like in this weather. Yeah. But, you know, my comment on that, doing this as long as I have, is this is normal mosquitoes. You know, and it's not nice to have normal mosquitoes, but after a dry year, they hurt that much more, I think, is what the problem is. Are they a different species? Because I'm getting... He's I, really yeah. suffered this summer. We technically have 54 kinds of mosquitoes, so you can react to some worse than others, and it just depends what comes. The ones that make life most miserable we call summer floodwater mosquitoes, and they take advantage. Every time you get a flooding rain and whole water for 10 days, you can push them, and they can come from 30 miles down the road, so it's not like it's your backyard is the source. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Are we we have continue, so many bug questions. Continue to see this shift as, as, as we get warmer here in Wisconsin? Oh, yes. I, I think so. I, you know, in, in particular, it's the lack of cold weather. I mean, I, I remember 25 and 30 below very commonly in Madison as a kid. You don't see that anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's often was the barrier for a lot of these things. So we have praying mantids breeding in the state now. We didn't, you know, 20 years ago. And again, it's because their eggs are surviving. So there's a number of examples. And as I said, it's kind of like you're moving everything northward. And, uh, you know, it's Ashland's getting to be like what Madison used to be. Really? So. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really interesting. I think things are changing. Will we, see, will we <laughs> see some of those 17-year cicadas that um, are in other parts Our next of the emergence country? in Wisconsin is 2024, and we don't see them in Madison, Lake Geneva, and down in that southeast part of the state, and also towards Mazamani and, and the like. But, yeah, it'll be quite, it's quite some time. All right. Well, thanks for bringing that in. That's fascinating as usual. Fascinating to see. Yeah. Good to see you. Good again. to good see you, Phil. Have a good summer. What's left of it? Thanks. <laughs>